So I actually got to level 15 Throne Liberty and I might make a full review but let's start with the combat first. There's a couple of problems in the game and a lot of them are actually very inconsistent so it's kind of hard to show you but I'll start with the most obvious one and that is this setting right here. Auto move within range to attack target. This feels very cheap and it feels like a mobile game but there's a reason why you kind of have to enable it. So right now if I stand right here and I press one button my character automatically walks there and attacks the target, right? Pretty straightforward, pretty obvious. It's, you know, it, it feels like a mobile game already to have that. But it's important to have that because the attack range of, well, especially melee, but I think even in range you can feel this, is insanely low. So as you can see right here, my abilities are blacked out. And the moment I get close enough to something, they light up, yeah? And I still have three abilities. I'm this close that don't work in melee. So I have to go even further. And now I can actually use them. Now I give you a little bit of a comparison, okay? This is the attack range of Thorn Liberty, the max melee attack range for auto attacking. The moment I walk away just a little bit, I can't keep attacking, right? I can't attack right now. I'm this close and there's no auto attacking. This is my auto attack range in WoW. I can use abilities, I can kick, I can do whatever. This is my auto attack range. Now it's a little bit misleading because this uh, target dummy is a little bit of a crazy hitbox. But even if I was just this close, I've already doubled the attack range of Throne of Liberty. Okay, just as an example. I, I think this is a massive deal. And it also like makes it makes it feel a lot more clunky that if you like even move out a little bit or the target moves a little bit which that is very important we'll get into that in a second you cannot attack anymore so this setting right here auto move within range of the target is kind of mandatory if you play melee because um, unless you have like giga attack range um, gear or something because it's just impossible to you know, be on the target all the time in this range. So that if the game does it for you, it makes it a lot easier. Okay. And that kind of brings me to the next point already, which is the auto attacking. The auto attacking is kind of weird in a sense that it actually slows you down. Now, it took me a while to test this um, because it's, it's kind of like it's a very subtle difference. But if you can, if I walk past this dummy while auto attacking, you can kind of tell that my character is slowing down a little bit while attacking. This is not something that happens in other tap target games. And it also makes it so if a target is simply running away from you, I'll have a clip for that. So this is this is the clip. I mean, it's already insane that they have an arena where you actually have to hook up and use this fucking bird. But watch what happens when I auto attack this guy who is actually wielding a staff. So I'm currently in stealth and trying to attack him, which already feels clunky because it doesn't attack automatically or instantly. But now, as you can see, he's simply walking away from me and my auto attacks are also already not connecting. Which is like a crazy thing in, in, a, in a tab target game. I'm just simply walking to him and he simply walks away from me and I can't reach him. So this slowing down of your auto attack is actually a big reason why the melee feels so clunky and it feels even worse in pvp because then people actually walk away from you so the auto attack range in combination with with the with, with you you know slowing down when you're attacking which is not a thing in wow which is not a thing in any other tab target game i can think of as you can see i'm not being slowed down at all by by walking and attacking in throne you are and it gets obviously even worse because in Throne, some abilities also lock you into animations, like this one, for example, after which you're very close to the target, but obviously you got slowed down because you're locked into an animation. You're not walking while doing this. And another problem with that is a lot of the abilities need a target to activate. So if I stand right here with no target, I cannot press this, I cannot press this, I cannot press this, I cannot press this, can't press that, I can't press that. This one I can press, and that's kind of the only ability that actually feels good. So it's kind of hard to make a tap target game feel smooth if every single one of ability of your abilities needs a target. Especially this one, with this one is essentially just an AoE cleave around you, right? Why do I need a target for that? That could literally just be free form ability, right? Why do I need a target? Then 
that also then locks me to the target and moves me towards the target for some reason. Like, it just feels clunky, you know? There's a lot of other things in the game that are very difficult to explain because they're very inconsistent. There's a lot of bugs, uh, one of which is that inertia happens uh, when you move still. This is not the case at the moment in my game. Yesterday I had that bug. Um, essentially there was a patch not too long ago where they removed inertia from your character. So basically you start walking immediately instead of like having a ramp up basically of your movement speed. This was removed, but there's a bug <laughs> that brings that back for some reason. I don't know. I don't know how to force that bug. I don't know how that happens, but it does happen. And the only way to remove it is to relaunch your game. So if your game feels inc like especially clunky one day, that's probably the reason. So I'll show you another bug that is kind of similar to the inertia bug, but not quite the same thing. So I was trying around things with casting. And in the beginning, you can see whenever I can whenever I cancel the cast, my, my character moves perfectly fine. This is what it should look like. So after you cancel your cast, you are instantly full movement speed and you kind of just keep walking. But for some reason, sometimes, I don't know if it has to do with you melee attacking in between or something else. You are, that doesn't work anymore. Right here, you can see it now. So whenever I cancel the cast now, he's like in some animation where he swaps weapons or whatever. And it slows the character down in the beginning. Just like the inertia would, right? Which is very weird how... I don't know why this happens. Maybe because of melee attacking in between. I'm not sure. But this is also something that I noticed. So there's a lot of these small little bugs that slow you down or feel like you s slow you down. Same with the targeting too. There's like a lot of little inconsistent things that make it feel a lot more sluggish. And one more thing that also makes it feel cheap, I guess similarly to the auto-targeting thing, is that no matter where my character looks, he will automatically turn to the target. So when I lo look this way, I target this guy, I press an ability, I automatically turn around. This does not work like that in any other tab target game at all. So if I go to WoW right now, hold on, let, let me stop attacking this guy. If I turn around and I try to attack, it says, you're facing the wrong way. You're facing the wrong, the target needs to be in front of you. There's no automatic turnaround just because you're too stupid to face the target, right? So the game doesn't turn your character for you. I think this also feels incredibly cheap and it's also super apparent on abilities like Shadow Strike, which literally tar like teleport you behind the target and you immediately start attacking. It's kind of a weird thing because the camera also doesn't really follow your character's movement as well as in other games. So that makes it even more clunky. But I think that is a really big reason why it feels so cheap and feels like a mobile game. Because I simply don't even face the target and I can just press the button and still attacks it. And kill them all. You don't need to face them, just come on, don't, don't hide, you can fight them, you daft rabbits. Hex. That's it. Just keep spamming that. You don't need to face them. The this is exactly what I'm talking about. Also, something we can talk about real quick is the dodge roll, which is for some reason on the same button as the block. I think this should be a separate button altogether, maybe similarly to Guild Wars 2 or even Lost Ark, where it could be a cooldown base, it could be stamina based, it, I don't know. But having it on a separate button would make it feel a lot more fluid and a lot more straightforward. So especially for new players, uh, this is a very weird way to have a dodge roll in your game. Uh, on top of that, it kind of like it kind of locks you into the animation at the end and it slows you down. So as you can see the, at the very end, I can't keep walking immediately. There's a little bit of a delay. The cool thing about the dodge roll is though that you can cancel abilities with it. So you can cancel the end lag of some abilities with the dodge roll and it makes it feel actually quite fluid. But that's also something that's also not very straightforward and I think having it on this button especially makes it feel a lot more clunky than it should be because it just shares a button with your block which you need for you know all kinds of things as well. Although the dodge roll kind of have a, has basically the same effect but it's still kind of a weird way to have a dodge roll in your game. Also, uh, something a lot of people have been complaining about is the, the, the weapon swapping, which works very differently than any other game. Espe well, essentially, you, there's no such a thing as weapon swapping in this game. All you swap is your auto attack, and that is basically it. 
So uh, it's it's kind of a weird way to to ha why why would you even have two weapons in the game if that's the extent of your weapon swap? But I think for quality of life reasons, just having all of your buttons on one bar makes it a little bit more easy to digest for new players. I still think this weapon swap feature is kind of weird, and I don't even I don't even really understand the reason why you would want a weapon swap. Uh, outside of maybe oh, I want to go range for a second here or something like that and yeah obviously having your your game based around weapons alone isn't the most uh, interesting feature ever I think it it kind of also shrinks the the entire toolkit of your character because as you can see I basically only have 12 abilities as a max level character that is very little for for a modern game and especially so for a tap target game, because obviously in action combat, there's a lot more going on even beyond your abilities. But in tap target, it does feel a little bit lackluster, especially so because most abilities have relatively long cooldowns. And that kind of makes it feel a little bit problematic. But that's not really the combat that's the problem here. It's more of the design that's the problem here. So let's talk about something that kind of transitions me into another game that I wanted to show you, which I think has the best tap target combat in the industry, which is uh, jumping. Let's, 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 let's talk about jumping in Thorn Liberty. So if you jump, you have zero control over your character, nothing. If, you, if I just jump straight up, I cannot move forward or backwards or anything, right? But once you're committed to a jump, that jump will happen. I can't turn my character, I can't move my character in any way. That might seem normal to you, but it's really not. So if you go to WoW, for example, if I jump up, I can still change my momentum a little bit, even if I didn't have any momentum beforehand. You see that? So I can jump up and still go forward, although I wasn't running beforehand. Also, it also commits you into a direction if you're jumping. So once you have any momentum while jumping, you can't change the direction, but you can change your character. So as you can see, I can still move my character around. My character follows my right click. And uh, yeah, I, although I'm still going the same direction, I can still turn my character. Now that is obviously not a very big deal because it doesn't really change anything, but it allows you to have a little bit more control over just, you know, what your character is doing, I guess. But that is just one step of the way there so let me exit out of wow and i'll open guild wars 2 which actually has even crazier jumping oh and before i log into guild wars 2 there's one more thing in throne liberty that i wanted to show you and that is first of all throne liberty doesn't have a global cooldown but rather an animation lock which is very odd also um, for example wow just have, has a global cooldown so whenever you press a button all of your other buttons become dark and then you kind of know when to press the next one this game doesn't have that every single ability that you press has a certain amount of animation that you have to go through before you can click the next button although there is no global cooldown and one more thing about that is and that i will show you in guild wars 2 as well there's almost no abilities in throne liberty that are off the global cooldown meaning you can use them during other abilities. This basically doesn't exist. I think there's one in staff that can actually, that allows you to actually cast while you're doing something else. But basically no other weapon has that. And well, on average, that doesn't exist in Throne of Liberty, which I also think contributes to it feeling a little bit clunky. Even WoW nowadays has a lot of abilities that are off the global cooldown that you can just use during anything. And on top of that, I also think there's very little going on on your class beyond just pressing your buttons. Obviously, there's some interactions like this one hits the target when it's poisoned multiple times or this one has a second ability, a second like trigger. Um, there's definitely some abilities that are somewhat interesting, but your character itself doesn't have a lot of interesting things going on. In WoW, for example, you have combo points for rogues, and energy for rogues, which kind of completely change the way you play the class. For ro warriors, you have weapons, like different stances. You have rage, which also change the way you play your class. In modern WoW, you have also maelstrom and all kinds of other stuff that kind of give the combat another layer that is just beyond your mana and your cooldowns, if that makes sense. That also is lacking in Throne Liberty, and maybe in the future there will be more of that. But as of right now, I think there's just very little to the combat beyond just 
some ability interactions and you just following your cooldowns. Okay, so now I'm in Guild Wars 2. And, well, as you can see, now let's talk about the jumping. Because I think that's the first thing that came to mind. In WoW, you can jump in one direction and then turn your character while jumping, right? In Throne of Liberty, you can only go one way. So if you jump, you, there's all the control you have. But in this game, not only can you, ch can you change momentum while jumping, you can even change direction while jumping. So, it, with your right mouse button, the, your character will follow the way you're looking. You can have complete control over your character's jumping movement, which makes jumping puzzles, which this game is made for, a lot more enjoyable because your character has just you just have way more control over your character which which is just such a great quality of life feature and i think especially because throne of liberty also tries to do some some jumping puzzle stuff it's kind of weird that they don't do that right like i can literally bait people let's say this is a cliff in a in a battleground and i can pretend that i'm jumping off and because i have full control over my jump and where it's going I can I can just jump back, you know? I can jump off the cliff and back onto the cliff. You know what I mean? I have full control over this over this character's movement. I think Throne Lib uh, I think Guild Wars 2 by the way has is the best tap target combat in the genre still, and I'll show you in a second why. So there's also some abilities that lock you in place that have animations. Let's say for example Blurred Frenzy. This one I can't I can move while doing it, but then I will cancel it. Yeah So if I really want to get most out of these kind of abilities I can actually use other abilities during it So off GCD abilities is what you call it in traditional tap target, but here I would just call it ability layering So while I'm casting this I can't teleport for example uh, Same goes for a lot of other things. Uh, let me just kill like some NPC real quick so this is a this is a very long cast, which is a finishing move, okay? I have a finishing move here, I'll cast it, and I can teleport during the cast, and teleport back in while I'm casting it. So there's a very, like, immense amount of ability layering that you can even use while you're casting something, which allows for very cool moves. And this goes way further than this, too. So, for example, I showed you earlier this Blurred Frenzy. As a Mesmer, my dodge is this. And I can actually use my dodge during anything, which is a very unique thing, but no other class has that. But it's such a cool feature. But when I'm casting something, in this case it doesn't make any sense because I'm already evading attacks while doing it. But just in general, if I'm casting something, I could just be using my dodge in the meantime and dodge an attack that's coming in. So I can react to things while I'm casting an ability. And that also goes for all of these class-specific abilities that basically make my clones explode. But while I'm casting, I can press these buttons and they do something. And last but not least is movement, well, through through the air, I guess. So I just put two dashes on my hotbar. And if I want to dash over this place, maybe to this house or something, I simply can't. It just stops me in place. Same with this dash too. It doesn't allow me. It doesn't allow me. I just fell off. I mean, let's not talk about the vaulting either because then I will have a mental breakdown. It's just not possible to dash over things. The, the game just blocks you from any hard edges to use your dashes or your mobility essentially. Now if we compare that again to Guild Wars 2, I have a dash on, well, which kind of is, it doesn't matter how I, how I actually do it, but I have a dash right here that allows me to easily jump over objects which can be used in PvE, PvP. There's so many little tricks you can do and on different kinds of battlegrounds and stuff where you can jump over things with this. It's just very, very useful. And even if it's a hard edge like this where I'm literally gonna fall to my death, it allows me to do that, you know? It allows me to fall down to my death. And I think that's something that's just overall, like the, the overall summary of this. Thorn Liberty does not give you a lot of control, and where it can, it actually takes away control from your character. So I cannot jump down a cliff with a dash in Thorn Liberty, which is maybe not a good thing because you don't want to jump off a cliff, but in a lot of other situations, actually jumping over things could be very useful, right? Jumping over this in some PvP or PvE scenario could be very useful.
So, yeah, in general, I think Throne Liberty just has very lackluster uh, control over your character, and that's the main reason why it feels so bad. The automatic turning, a lot of inconsistent bugs, and the movement in general, and the melee attack range, and even the range attack range to an extent, is just all very inconsistent or very, very short. And that just makes it feel clunky and annoying to maneuver in. And yeah, and overall, I think that's that those are the main reasons why the game feels so clunky. I'm sure there's more things, and I'm sure there's also more bugs that I just didn't encounter yet that other people have been have been struggling with. So yeah, I hope this helped a little bit, and I hope that maybe someone that actually can change these things in Throne of Liberty sees this. So maybe a couple of these things can be very easily fixed and the game will already feel way smoother afterwards so yeah thanks for watching guys thanks for tuning in and um yeah i'll might i might do a full review after this i'm not sure yet because i think my input on anything beyond combat and maybe pvp is kind of vain so we'll see what happens but yeah thanks for hanging out thanks for tuning in and i hope this helped peace